this needs to be turned in just so. I'm gonna make sure the sub knows. I'm gonna make sure that the admin knows so that they. <laughs> Hello everyone, thanks so much for tuning into my channel this week. Now you know what I'm gonna do before I move any further, before I tell you anything about this week's topic. If you like this video, please be sure to click like. And if you haven't done so already, what are you waiting for? Please be sure to subscribe to my channel. One more thing, if you have not already done so, please be sure to bell me so that way you're gonna get an update every time I post new content. If you like this particular video, you can always check out my blog on my website at www.shikahenley.com. Okay, so this week, I'm just gonna be super honest. This week was like a writer's block week. I was like, what the heck am I gonna write about? I, I got nothing. Um, usually something happens when we have conversations. I'm in a professional development, something happens and I'm like, wow, that's a really cool thing I need to talk about. But this week I had no clue what to write about. So I went to my good friend Google to see what was trending. And I was actually tickled to see that what was trending was 60% uh, of the searches for education in the United States were for Frontline, which I was, I was extremely tickled by this. Um, and if you don't know what Frontline is, Frontline is um, a, an absence management system. So that's what we use to, when teachers are absent, you, uh, enter those absences there. Um, if you need to get a sub or request a sub, you can also use it to request subs. So I just was like, wow, you know what? We're really at that point. It's February. People are tired. So people are taking mental health days. People are also still battling their super flu. You can see a few of those videos, how my voice was totally gone for a long time. Um, so people were just out. And I thought, wow, you know, it'd be a really good topic. How do we support subs in our building so that it's a great experience for everyone? So I want you to stay tuned because I've given tips for both teachers and administrators to help support substitute teachers once they enter your building. Number one, be sure to have a welcome packet ready for your sub. Now, this does not have to be some super complicated thing. This is definitely something that can be reused. Like what I use is something that can be reused with just slight modifications and slight, slight tweaks. Um, but in addition to those basics that you're going to include, you're going to have rosters, you're going to have schedules, you're going to have the sub plans, probably seating charts. Put a couple of extra things that will really make things easier for your sub. You have to remember that your sub bounces around from building to building, classroom to classroom. And so your sub doesn't really know the culture of your building if that person hasn't been there before. So make sure you include things like just basic rules. Um, like, for example, in my school, students use certain hand symbols when they have to go to the restroom or they have to sharpen a pencil, etc. Those are all things that I include in there. Um, in addition, I also put highlight key people that they need to lean on. So if you are subbing for sixth grade, I highlight the other sixth grade teachers so that you know who you can lean on. Um, who is the dean in that particular area? Who is someone who can help you with curriculum support? Who is someone who can help you with housekeeping? But these are all things that people need to know once they come into your building. Number two, I also deliver a mini orientation. So once subs come in, I always come in and I introduce myself to them and then I give them a brief orientation. So I go through everything that's in that uh, welcome packet to make sure they know what everything is and what they should be doing. I walk them through the building, show them what restrooms are, lounges, where they can leave um, their belongings. I show them their classrooms. I kind of introduce them to the kids and different people in the, as I'm running in the halls, like, oh, this is another sixth grade teacher or this is a dean. These are all things that are helpful. It it helps to welcome in the substitute teacher because again this person isn't necessarily in your building all the time they don't know who this person is they can't match a face to this name so it's important that you're just trying to get them as acclimated to the building as possible number three support your substitute teacher throughout the day. So don't just give them that welcome packet orientation and leave them in the classroom and go. Make sure you're supporting them throughout the day. Make sure you stop in to make sure things are okay. Even if you're a teacher and you know that a person, a colleague is out, pop in just to make sure that everything's okay, they understand everything, they know how to use things. Because again, they are new to your building. They may not be here tomorrow. They may not ever come back again. And if you want them to be able to best support the kids, you have to make sure that you're also supporting them. Number four, so number four is for my teachers. Please leave a doable lesson plan. Um, don't leave something that's way too easy that they can do in five or 10 minutes because then that means that's a management issue. Now the kids, you're gonna come back, and your room's gonna look like a tornado hit it. And then on the other end, don't leave something that is super complicated or take into consideration the fact that you may teach a very specialized content area. You may teach a, a language, you may teach a very specific math, and it may be something that 
if a person doesn't necessarily speak that language or hasn't seen trigonometry since they were a junior in high school that they would struggle with supporting students with. Make sure you break everything down into increments. For 10 minutes, students should be doing this. For 15 minutes, students should be doing this. 10 minutes, they should do this. Have this particular student pick this assignment up, collect it, and leave it in this place. Because those are all things that'll make it easier for someone to be able to just walk through your lesson plan. I always tell my teachers, don't leave a sub plan for a sub that you would be upset if you had to receive, if you had to cover a person's class. Number five, leave clear instructions for students. So if you know you're gonna be out for a day or two and it's definitely a possibility for you to do, please make sure you make sure that your kids know um, what exactly they should be doing. It shouldn't be a big secret that you're gonna be gone on Friday or on Wednesday, right? Let them know, I'm not gonna be here. However, my expectation is you're gonna complete these three things. These things have to be submitted to me via email or left on my desk. These have to be turned into the sub. This person is responsible for picking up these things. I'm gonna leave very explicit uh, directions for you on the board. The clearer these things are, the easier it's gonna be for your sub and the easier it's gonna be for your kids. Number six, make sure you check out with the sub before they go. And this also doesn't have to be a complicated thing. As my subs are walking out to go sign out in the office, I usually just stop them and say, hey, how was the day? How did everything go today? And then they'll do a quick chat. Oh, well, you know, it was really great or I really struggled with this particular period. But it's their time to just express everything that's happened and it's a good way to just end your day. So don't just let the subs run out of the building. If someone's in the office, just, hey, how was your day? How did it go today? Okay, and listen to whatever feedback that they have because you can use that feedback in the future uh, when you have different subs. Uh, because one thing that I always say is uh, subs can elect to not come to your building. So you need to make sure that subs are happy when they're there because when it's like a super flu and everybody's out and you need subs and there's a shortage, you don't want to necessarily have a school that people are like, oh, last time I went there was really unorganized or all this stuff was happening. I don't really know for sure if I want to go back to that building because then it just becomes more stressful for the people who are in the building. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick recap of the six things that you can do to help support subs when they are in your building. Uh, number one, make sure you have a welcome packet ready for them to go so you can just go ahead and roll that out. Number two, deliver some sort of a mini orientation showing them where things are and explaining all the information that's in your welcome packet. Number three, support yourself throughout the day. Don't just let them go once they walk into a classroom, but check in with them periodically throughout the day so that you can provide support for them. Number four, leave a doable sub plan. Please do not leave, leave a sub plan that is too easy or too difficult to do because then that's just going to cause issues for everyone. Number five, leave clear instructions for students if you know that you're going to be gone. Make sure your kids know what they need to be doing and how they need to do it. Make sure everything is written in a, pla a place where they know what to expect to see. And number six, be sure to check out with your subs as they leave out. So just make sure you do a quick check in to see how the day was and you get any additional feedback. So I hope you liked this video. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, if you liked it, you know what to do. Please be sure to click like. If you haven't done so already, stop waiting. Go ahead and subscribe. And if you would like to check out the blog for this particular video, and you know there's always more information in the blog, and I'm so busy when I write, please check that out at www.shikahenley.com. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you next week.